or writing good like this come to your mind, Peter? Um, hmm. All right, so first, uh, I, s I was watching the New York City Marathon, and um, mm -hmm. I the, the it was the last maybe three miles mm -hmm. they were going into the park and so on and so forth, and I was watching these, uh, it was men, it was the, the arrival of men, uh, and uh, I just couldn't stop crying. So I thought maybe there is something else going on right now. I'm just gonna turn off the TV. I'm gonna, you know, wash my face, do something. Mm -hmm. So I did. I come back. Mm -hmm. I turn it on, and I just am bawling uncontrollably. So I get silent, and I, and I feel that what I am feeling is that these people, this sport, with no technology, and these men and women uh, who have trained so much are now just them, their heartbeat, their breath, and their desire to get this thing done. And I thought, this is fantastic. It, it touches me in a way that I can't even understand it. I have to use it in something that I write. Two days later, I realized that I could write a story that had all the elements of my life up until to that point. So mm -hmm. I put together, uh, a world where there is this successful New York City couple. Uh, he's a successful investment banker. She's a fantastic, renowned uh, artist. They have a wonderful seven-year-old uh, daughter. Uh, and they are the couple that makes the cover of magazines and they are the dream couple. But behind closed doors, uh, she is an addict and he is a badly managed type one, uh, person with type one diabetes about to lose his life. And when they, uh, when he discovers her addiction, they, they are forced to face their demons. And yeah, yeah. the way they do that will determine the rest of their lives. Wow. And he used to be a competitive marathon runner mm -hmm. who had to give it up. Uh, because of the onset of diabetes and mm -hmm. through what he learns, discovers, because he gets hooks up, hooked up uh, with a cutting edge research mm -hmm. uh, project mm -hmm. about uh, the impact of stress on diabetes and our metabolism, um, he goes back to his dream that of, of running that he had shelved. Uh, so Every, it's it's written in a very fast-paced, thriller-like uh, fashion, so you are entertained first of all, um, and uh, and this is you know this is the path that mirrors my experience because I've had type one diabetes since I was seven years old, and I went through the tough times. I was in hypoglycemic coma six times, and uh, my wife Annie knows you know, the difficulties of the ups and downs of diabetes. But at a certain point in my life, I, I realized that if I was looking at this thing, since it has to be with me for my life, what if instead of looking at it as a disease, a problem, an issue, a limit, I just think it's my friend. <gasps> So I'm gonna go oh for the rest gosh. of my life with this buddy of mine. And does he have something to teach me? And when I started looking at diabetes this way, my entire life changed. changed. And now I think mm. that I have something you don't have. Yeah. I get something you don't get. And so I gave this point of view to Paul, the character in, yeah. in my book, and I made it, you know, uh, fluid, entertaining, and, yeah. and everything, yeah, and yeah. this is the story. That's how diabetes saved your life. That's how diabetes saved my life. Is saving your life. It has saved my life because my father killed himself, and when he killed himself, I said to myself, I'm never gonna do what he did. And then a few years later, <clears throat> I realized that what he did with a gun, I was doing with diabetes. I was choosing not to take care of myself, and so slowly 
I was killing myself, something that he did instantaneously, but it wasn't really different. We both were choosing to not <clears throat> embrace life. ourselves and yeah. our life. Yeah. And so when that happened, having diabetes, which is such a loud uh, mirror of what is good and bad for me, because if you eat a pint of ice cream, you feel a little, you know, heavy, a little dizzy or, or something, and but then it's okay. If I eat a pint of ice cream, you know, something happens to me instantaneously. If, if I am with a, a situation or in a situation that is stressful, uh, immediately my blood sugar level tells me. So if I pay attention to it, it becomes a, a truth tool it, it becomes a mechanism that allows me to know more about myself to be better about myself to be more honest about myself and also diabetes uh, asks me to eat healthily exercise be healthy uh, be calm and live a healthy life you go in any uh, bookstore and nine out of ten books that have to do with health and well-being and self-help are about these very things so why should I feel that I am you know less than the things that I have to do are the things that everybody has to do of course yeah yeah or should do yeah, yeah. Let's talk about you as an actor, Peter. Yes. My question is, of all the characters that you've played, which one do you like most? I really don't know. I have to say that I fell in love with each one of the characters that I played, regardless mm. of you know their magnitude, let's say 90% of them. And I like to say that the one that I liked the most is the one that I will play next. <laughs> okay. What's your message to the world, if you have one? Be happy. For what would you like to be remembered forever? My happiness. Any projects for the future? Oh yeah, so many. How can J Talk Show followers find you? You have a website? Yes, uh, okay. peterarpezella.com peterarpezella.com Punto com Punto, Punto com <laughs> Punto com. Io lo so. E lo sa. Any wood sa tutto. <laughs> There's everything about me, all the updates, the work. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. So they can keep in touch and yes. they can contact yes. you. Yes. Are you the kind of actor that replies to questions made by fans? I love interaction with oh. fans. I wow. always On respond. social platforms also? Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Absolutely. Where are you? I am on Facebook. Okay. I am on Twitter. Yeah. Those are my two. Favorite two. ones? Yes. Okay. Yes. And on Facebook, I am Peter Arpicella. Uh, uh, yes. And there is a page and a personal uh, account. Okay. And on Twitter, I am Peter Arp. And on Instagram, Peter Arpe. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you have a favorite motto? Something that resonates true all the time is Shakespeare's, and this above all else, to thine own self be true. It is my experience in my life that my life yeah. changed when I became honest with myself about mm. not having a clue about myself first. Mm -hmm. And then my daily life is based on constantly checking in with myself. And mm -hmm. obviously, you know, we have to, or I have to adjust. And But what makes a difference, in my opinion, is my awareness. If I am unaware that I am not in touch with myself, that's the source of tension, unhappiness. If I am aware that I am not doing the thing that would I would prefer, but I am aware and I do it anyway, I, I am still driving my... Your car. My car. Your destiny. Still driving my, yes, yes, yes. My yes. life. To my own self, I have to be true every day if I want to be happy and if I want to be effective in, yes, in everything in what you're do. doing, everything yes, you're doing. Yes, yeah. Okay. What does singing represent to you? Life. I always say 
I love to play with the wind on the ocean. Oh, wow. So whether I'm racing or we're cruising, that's what I love. Sailing becomes a beautiful experience when I am... In control? No. Lined up with the wind and the ocean, just like in life, okay. life becomes magnificent when I am lined up with my true self and with the, the things and the people that are around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sailing becomes very bad and can become very dangerous when I force my control over what the wind, the sails, the boat, the ocean would otherwise want me to do. Yeah. And life becomes miserable when I force my trying to be in control over what would be a different course of action if I were aligned with myself, my true self, the people, the things around me. Jay Talk Show thanks you to be Thank you. our guest. Yes. It yes. was a privilege and honor yeah. to have you here in Lugano to make this interview. My pleasure. And uh, I know that you came with Annie from Rimini. It's yes. great to have yes. you both here with Thank me. you. Thank you. It's great uh, to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you for having us. You're very, very welcome. Till the next. Bye.